And Fox 5 Local News at 5 begins with a news alert in the district where new information has been released in last year's deadly police-involved shooting on Capitol Hill. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Tony Perkins. And I'm Laura Evans. The U.S. Capitol and Secret Service officers who shot and killed a Connecticut woman after she led them on a chase last October have been cleared of wrongdoing. The U.S. Attorney's Office says there is insufficient evidence to pursue criminal charges. Fox says Paul Wagner joins us now live with that story. Paul? Hi, Laura and Tony. This investigation was con uh, conducted by the D.C. Police Department and it took nine months for the U.S. Attorney's Office to review all of the evidence in the case that included witnesses and video and pictures as well as the autopsy and other statements that they were able to take a look at. After the nine months, the U.S. Attorney's Office has decided that these uh, officers were justified in shooting. What hasn't been answered and what's not in the investigation and what was released by the U.S. Attorney's Office is why this happened. Why did Miriam Keary drive down here from Stanford, Connecticut, go to the White House, and then lead these officers on the chase that ended up here on the Capitol? At this point, it's still a mystery. Just after 2 p.m. last October 3rd, Miriam Carey, with her young child in the back seat of her black sedan, drove into a White House checkpoint just off 15th Street Northwest. These pictures, released by the U.S. Attorney's Office, show Carey driving into the checkpoint, making a U-turn, before striking an off-duty Secret Service officer who tried to place a barrier in front of her car. According to a timeline of events put together by investigators, Carey then drove down Pennsylvania Avenue, running red lights, before being stopped in Garfield's Circle near the Capitol. This video, shot by a cameraman nearby, shows several officers firing eight rounds at Carey's car as she attempts to drive away. She was not hit by the gunfire. According to the timeline, Carey then drove up Constitution Avenue toward the Senate office buildings, where the pop-up barricades had been deployed and she was unable to drive any further. Carey then reversed her vehicle towards a Capitol Police officer who opened fire along with a U.S. Secret Service officer. Both officers fired nine times, hitting the Connecticut woman five times in the neck and torso. There is nothing in the report indicating why Carey may have been running from the police or why she went to the White House. She was not under the influence of illegal drugs or alcohol and there were no weapons in the car. Carrie's family was told of the decision today after prosecutors interviewed 60 witnesses and reviewed video footage and the autopsy. Now, as you may recall, back in October when this uh, incident took place, uh, many uh, news outlets, including, including our own, quoted unnamed law enforcement sources as saying that Carrie was uh, struggling with some mental health issues. Her family denied that at the time. Uh, we have not heard from the family other than her attorney, which put out a, a statement to some uh, news outlets in uh, Connecticut saying that they were not surprised by today's decision, that they uh, were told of the decision in a conference call with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and that their wrongful death lawsuit will go forward. We attempted to reach out to the U.S. Capitol Police to see if they wanted to comment today. Uh, they declined, as did the uh, uh, union representing the officers. Uh, they declined as well. We do know that there were two U.S. Capitol Police officers who were on paid administrative leave for the last nine months. Uh, we understand now that they will be coming back to work. Laura? Paul Wagner tonight. Paul, thank you.